Hello and welcome to the episode 120 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Some of the stories we'll cover today include an idea for a radio show centered on the Beatles, a busy day in Scotland, and the return of You Know My Name, Look Up The Number. On the 30th of April 1961, we have the 30th performance in a month at the Top 10 Club for the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums. The band's second residence in Hamburg, West Germany, had known no pause so far. Third residency going strong one year later in 1962, this time at the Star Club in Hamburg, where the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best, had performed with just one stop since the beginning of their stint. 1963. Today, Vernon Lawrence, a young studio manager for BBC Radio, sent a programme idea centred on the Beatles to Donald McLean, assistant head of BBC Radio. The programme was approved and given a budget of £100 per show, about £2,100 in 2020 money. The initial series was four show long, with 11 more in the can if these first four were successful. The format of each episode was a familiar one at the time. The Beatles were to act as the resident band, with each show featuring another musical guest, chosen by BBC. The program would also have featured Lee Peters as compare to introduce the bands, exchange fun dialogues with the Beatles, and so on. The Beatles used to refer to him as P. Liters when away from microphones. The program, called Pop Go the Beatles, would air on BBC Radio on Tuesdays from 5 to 5.29 pm, a proven spot for pop music audiences. Interestingly enough, the Beatles decided to use the program to perform the rhythm and blues repertoire of songs that they had covered during the first phase of their career, offering to the public a diverse array of songs than those that they could hear in the current live shows, restricted to a few hit songs for about 20-25 minutes of performance. On the 30th of April 1964, the Beatles had a busy day in Scotland. Early in the afternoon, they received BBC reporter Evelyn Elliot and the camera crew in their rooms at the Roman Camp Hotel in Callander to film an interview aired on the day's BBC One 610 programme between 6.10 and 6.31 pm. Later on, they were at the Theatre Royale in Glasgow to film their contribution to Round Up, a lengthy interview with Morag Hood and Paul Young. The programme was broadcast locally on STV on the 5th of May between 5 and 5.55 pm. Finally, in the evening, the band performed two houses at the Odeon Cinema in Glasgow. And let's break the flow of this episode for a minute for a gentle reminder to please visit www.simonmas.com support if you want to find out how you can help me to put more music-related content on the internet. Even by just telling your friends about this podcast, you can be instrumental in making me produce more videos and podcasts revolving about music history, music theory and composition. Please be fab and spend five minutes of your time to support the content you love. Thank you! More filming for help in 1965, with the Beatles still busy at the Twickenham Film Studios. Today, they shot the sequence in which a jeweler tries to remove Ringo's ring, and the scene in which John and Ringo ride a magnetized lift to get rid of said ring. Most of the day, though, was spent filming the scene in which, while the band is recording You're Going to Lose That Girl, the section of the floor under the drums is being sewn off, with Ringo subsequently falling through the hole. And we close the show with a real recording session, taking place on the 30th of April 1969. After another playback of recently recorded Beatles numbers, 
taking place at the EMI Studios between 2.30 and 6.15 p.m., Chris Thomas produced a 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. session, mostly consisting of overdubs. The work started with a quick lead guitar overdub on Larry B that was later used by Glyn Jones in his tentative master tapes of the Get Back album. It was the only track on Jones's versions of Get Back which resorted to any overdub. Then, John Lennon and Paul McCartney, with a little help from Beatles assistant Mal Evans, recorded a host of vocal tracks and numerous sound effects on Do You Know My Name, Look Up The Number, a song that had been laid dormant since June 1967. The work mostly took place onto the latter part of the 6 minute 8 second track, which means that it was mostly edited out when the song was issued in March 1970 as a 4 minute 19 second piece. The song was mixed in mono before the end of the session. This concludes this episode of What A Fab Day, the month of April and the first third of this podcast. Let me thank my three or four listeners out there for the passion with which they are following this crazy, in-depth venture into the history of the Beatles. Tomorrow, we'll talk about the last UK concert of the Fab Four. Tune in to know more. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.